And welcome back to Capital Talk, folks. All this week, the theme is conservation. That's right. We always think about the Mao when you think of conservation, folks. But there are other issues, serious issues, issues that are affecting you and I and you may not know. And guess what? The lions, king of the beasts, threatened by this thing here, folks. It looks like a salt shaker. It looks like a salt in a little plastic. But this poison, this pesticide, is killing our lions. They're down to less than 2,000 in the last several years, heading to extinction. Think about that for a moment. This is also killing birds, insects, all kinds of wildlife, and humans, and we may not even know. Dr. Paula Kahumba knows. She's just been nominated. She's just about to get a, a huge award from National Geographic, the Buffett Conservation Award in America. But I tell you, this is because of her work for the last 13, 14 years in conservation. She's also the chairperson of the Friends of Nairobi National Park, folks. A lot of issues right there. And also, Kenya Land Conservation Trust. Good grief, so many hats. What a doctor. <laughs> Goodness, so Nairobi National Park. You, you're, you're the chairperson of what, Friends of? The Friends of Nairobi Park was started 15 years ago to basically bring together the people who live around Nairobi and love this park and give them an opportunity to participate and help Kenya Wildlife Service to better manage the park, to, to be a watchdog, to stop some of the terrible things that are happening that are destroying this great park, um, and actually to come up with new ideas. So we have all sorts of great programs that we get our members involved in, and we have um, over 300 members now, and we're growing very, very rapidly. Yeah, and this park, I mean, you, you, have you seen it turned around the last 15 years? Because, you know, I'd, I'd love to go there every now and then, you know, just go out there, you know, yeah. get a ticket and spend morning. Yeah, Nairobi Park, I mean, it really is the world's greatest city game park. There is nothing like it anywhere else in the world. I mean, where could you find wild lions, wild rhinos, right at the doorstep of a major capital city? The park has changed dramatically over the last 15 years. So just think about it. Nairobi is a city that is basically getting prepared to be the regional hub for all of Eastern Africa, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, Sudan, Somalia, Ethiopia. We're not talking of a small city. This city is growing extremely rapidly. We've all seen it. You see it everywhere. And what's happening is it's basically beginning to hug the park and it's threatening to actually embrace the park completely. And the reason why this park is so special is because the wildlife move. The wildlife need to move. They migrate. The park is a dry season zone. The animals come in during the height of the dry season because it's the last refuge of grass. Right? It's the last place that the wildebeest and the zebras can get their grass. And the predators follow them, so the park is full of lions. If you go in there today, Jeff, there's about 35 lions. Females with cubs, big males. There's an old male called Njonjo who's come back. He's 15 years old. He's the oldest lion probably in this country. Yeah. And he's back in the park. So it's a really extraordinary place, but the wildlife has to move. All this development, and especially the infrastructure development, yeah. is affecting the movement of the animals outside of the park. And that's what the Friends of Nairobi National Park, or FONAP, is trying to address. We're trying to find solutions that work for landowners, for the government, for industries and for the city of Nairobi because we want the city to recognize that Nairobi Park is its greatest asset. This is our central park. This is our Eiffel Tower, isn't it? This is our... Absolutely. And it's better than any of those. I mean, my God, wouldn't um, Americans love to have wild lions right on the doorstep of their city? I mean, how many photographs have you seen that iconic picture of a lion with the backdrop of the city? Mm. I mean, where else in the world can you get that? We're so lucky. <laughs> but as citizens of Kenya and Nairobi in particular, we take it for granted. We assume that it's going to be there forever. Well, in fact, it's under threat. It's under great threat. And we have to work together to save this park. And not just the park, Paula, because this is a scary statistic about these, this thing killing off the lions. I mean, they, could yeah. they become extinct if nothing is done? Because nothing seems to be, yeah. not enough noise is being made. Jeff, we have to do a lot as a nation to address the problem of uh, land, endangered species, the needs of predators, the needs of our wildlife. Most of our wildlife needs to move. We cannot fence every park the way we've done Nakuru National Park. We can't do that. We need to create buffer zones, we need to create dispersal areas, and we need corridors for animals to move from one park to, the, to another. The wildebeest of Nairobi Park used to go all the way to Amboseli. They're the same subspecies of wildebeest. They're called the eastern white-bearded wildebeest. They're almost extinct. And that's because we've chopped off their migration route. They need to move to go and find minerals, to go to their calving zones and to find grass during the dry season. And as a nation, we've said in Vision 2030 that we'll create all these wonderful corridors, but actually there's been no tangible plans on the ground to 
counter the contradictory um, claims in, the, in Vision 2030. So Vision 2030 also talks about major infrastructure development, investments in agriculture, um, development of housing estates. It's all, it's all in conflict with conservation and it doesn't have to be. It really doesn't have to be. We can work together. But unfortunately, I don't think our government has really recognised the importance of the need to integrate conservation into city planning or into urban and even rural planning. Yeah. Tourism brings in, what is it, 12% yeah. of the GDP? It used to be the biggest money earner. So how on earth can we develop tourism without taking care of the actual asset itself, the asset base, the lions, the elephants, the rhinos? We can't. It doesn't make sense. And it's like blocking off the Mara or the Serengeti, right? Absolutely. And, and zoning in the world. How do you do that? How can one do that? You we'll can't. destroy and, the whole ecosystem. And in fact, um, uh, headlines in the last few weeks have been that a study of long-term uh, population trends in the Mara have shown that the Mara is in trouble. Well, while Kenyans get very excited about Tanzania's president's plan to put a highway right across the, the Serengeti, mm -hmm. we can all see from here that's going to threaten a very big business opportunity for us in the Mara. And in fact, what are we doing about saving the Mara from the Kenyan side? We have no moral authority, Jeff. I feel so embarrassed sometimes when people say to me, why don't you guys, why don't you get your president to go and talk to Kikwete? I'm like, because we have no moral authority. We can't. That's so sad. That no, is it's so terrible. But it doesn't have to be. Kenya could be the regional leader in this stuff. Does that frustrate you sometimes, Doc? Does that, I mean, the, the efforts. 